Okay, in today's video, as you can see, I'm going to be going over AC power for purely capacitive circuits, that is circuits that contain only capacitors, no resistors, and no inductors. And we're going to be doing that using this graph, which shows the relationship between the voltage, which is represented by this red waveform, the current, which is represented by this blue waveform, and the power, which is represented by this dashed green line waveform. Okay, now one thing that you should know about purely capacitive circuits and that you should notice by this graph is that the voltage and the current are out of phase. The peak voltage and the peak current do not occur at the same point in the cycle. And in fact, the current leaves the voltage by 90 degrees. And you can see that right here. Here's the current waveform. You can see the peak current occurs before the peak voltage. The peak current occurs before the peak voltage, and so on and so on. The peak current occurs before the peak voltage. And in purely capacitive circuits, the voltage leaves the current by 90 degrees. Now you can see in this diagram that the voltage oscillates between positive and negative. The current oscillates between positive and negative. And the power also oscillates between positive and negative values. Now, when we calculate the average power for a capacitive circuit, we can use this equation that the average power is equal to the RMS voltage times the RMS current. We always use the RMS values when we're talking about power times the cosine of the phase angle phi. Now, we said down here that the phase angle is 90 degrees. So we take the V out, we put the 90 degrees. Now, if you remember what the cosine of 90 degrees is, you can remember what the cosine curve looks like, or you can calculate that on your calculator pretty simply. You will remember that the cosine of 90 degrees is zero. So that means when we calculate the average power for a capacitive circuit, we take the RMS voltage times the RMS current, but then we just multiply it times the cosine of 90 degrees, and the cosine of 90 degrees is zero. And that means that the average power consumed in a capacitive circuit, a purely capacitive circuit, is zero watts. The average power is zero watts. Well, how can it be zero watts? Well, I'm going to try and go through and just show you and clarify conceptually qualitatively why the average power in that capacitive AC circuit is zero. And I'm going to do that by looking at the relationship between the voltage, the current, and the power through one cycle. And we're going to do that a quarter of a cycle at a time. So for the first quarter cycle, you will notice that when we calculate the, when we calculate the power or the average power through a quarter cycle, we get a positive voltage and a positive current. So when we multiply those two together, we get a positive power. But then you'll notice in the next quarter cycle, the voltage is still positive, but the current is negative. So we have a positive voltage times a negative current, and that results in a negative power. Well, for the next quarter, the third quarter, now we have a negative voltage. The, negative, the voltage is negative, the current is negative, we multiply that negative voltage times that negative current, a negative times a negative positive, of course, and we get a positive power. But for the last cycle, okay, the last quarter cycle, we now we have a positive current and the voltage is still negative. So we multiply the negative voltage times the positive current and a negative times a positive is still gives us a negative value. So you can see when I add up the values under this curve, the values under this part of the power curve, the values under this part of the power curve, and the area, so to speak, under this power curve, if I add all that up, I get zero. And that means that the average power through one cycle, and for a repeating cycle like that, the average power for our AC capacitive circuit is zero, and we can draw that purple line right there to represent the average power, the average power being zero. Okay, so that's AC power for purely resistive circuits, and the average power in that circuit is zero. And on the last slide here, I'm just going to go through and summarize what we just talked about. In a capacitive circuit, the current leaves the voltage by 90 degrees. 
Okay, that's the phase angle. The current and the voltage are out of phase. In a resistive circuit, they're in phase, but in a capacitive and inductive circuits, they're out of phase, and for capacitive circuits, the current leads the voltage. That's the phase angle. Sometimes we use this handy-dandy device. We have Ellie the ice man. This is the ice part. This is, tells us this is for capacitive circuits. The current comes before the voltage, and we use that ice to, to remind us that. And the power in, its, in the capacitive circuit can be positive or negative. Now, what's the difference between positive and negative power? Positive and negative power, the negative sign and the positive sign just tells us the direction that the power is flowing in that circuit. When the power is positive, then the power is flowing from the source to the load. And when the power is negative, that means the power is flowing from the load back into the circuit or back towards the source. But when we add all those up, we get that the average power is zero degrees. Okay, so there you go. That's AC power for purely capacitive circuits. I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following four things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Give me a thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section below. And don't forget that sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends and show them how much you care. Thank you very much. We'll see you in the next video.